I had 15 minutes to do an artist talk. It's like the hardest thing in the world to do because when you're talking about your work, um, you tend to ramble. At least I do. So um, yeah. So thanks for uh, for inviting me up here to do this, and it's been wonderful to uh, to be able to produce this great festival. And um, uh, it's definitely something that this sort of thing, uh, concert organizing and in general, sort of enabling artists to show work and blow minds, as Sean uh, so nicely put it, uh, is a huge passion of mine um, because uh, it's, it's obviously because of my own mind being blown that um, I've become an artist in the first place. So, um, so I'm from south of the border, and I'm very new to Edmonton. So some of what I'm going to be talking about is prior to Edmonton, but I'll try to rush through most of that and talk about what I've been doing since I got here. Um, and uh, um, trying to become a Canadian, uh, which is taking time. But anyway, I, I love it here and uh, been quite welcomed to this community. Um, Where are you from originally? I'm originally from Colorado. Uh, well, I was born in Texas, so I'm technically a Texan. Uh, but my parents um, very kindly moved um, <laughs> when I was three years old. So uh, I grew up at 10,000 feet in elevation in an old silver mining town in Colorado. And unlike Sean, um, I did not have an amazing DJ playing experimental music available in this small town. So uh, I began playing the piano probably at age, I don't know, seven or eight, um, somewhat reluctantly. Um, and, uh, and a few years later, when I turned 10, I, uh, I received a tape recorder uh, for my birthday, a cassette recorder. And uh, my father was kind of a, an audiophile. Um, and uh, if you know anything about the 1970s, and uh, there was a kind of a, it was kind of the, the today's version of the man cave was this, the stereo room. Uh, and my father was definitely one of those hi-fi enthusiasts, and he had a really nice stereo system and made his own um, mixtapes on 8-track cassettes or 8-track cartridges and so I spent a lot of my childhood listening uh, to lots of music, uh, mostly 70s popular music uh, like Boston and uh, a little bit of country and a little bit of everything really, the Beatles, um, uh, Linda Ronstadt, Elton John, Queen, all that stuff. So that was all kind of like bubbling around in my head um, along with some classical music from my father's choir, that he, amateur choir that he sang in. Um, but the other thing that really excited me, and I'm glad that, um, that Kevin talked a little bit about the sort of the idea that electroacoustics um, is sound effects to some people. Um, and I remember vividly um, learning about the idea of sound effects from shows like Doctor Who and the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. And um, the Skywalker Labs that produced all the great sound effects for the Star Wars movies and, um, and all that stuff. Um, that was something that was hugely influential on me. Um, and so when I received my tape recorder, I began um, using it in such a way, uh, not only making my own mixtapes, um, but also making noises and, and sort of cutting and splicing and doing all that stuff without realizing that it was an art form, because uh, it was a pretty isolated place and I didn't know about electroacoustics at all. Um, so anyway, to, to fast forward, um, I went to music school, I started as a piano major, I switched to composition, and I continued on. Uh, and of course, in doing all of those things, going through a sort of traditional academic education, one uh, is often encouraged to shun anything uh, resembling popular music which led to me living in Seattle for four years during the grunge era without ever once seeing a Nirvana performance uh, live, which is you know pretty un unfortunate, actually. But anyway, um, I, I, a lot of things that I did learn in Seattle and various places that I moved around to, um, and one of those was that um, I really hated the music conservatory environment. Uh, and so at a certain point when I was pursuing a, a degree at Peabody Conservatory, um, I, I escaped um, and I took a job um, in Troy, New York, working for an electronic arts department um, and I reimagined myself as an artist. I stopped composing instrumental music, which I've been doing a lot of, um, and I actually stopped making electroacoustic music because um, I found that there, was, there seemed to be a lack of connection between the two things that I was doing 
instrumental music and electroacoustic music, and that really bothered me as an artist. And so I decided to just put them both aside for a while, and I started improvising. Um, and I became highly influenced not only by um, uh, artists like Jerry Hemingway and Joel Taylor and Curtis Vaughn, who I was working with, and Mark Dresser and Pauline Alvarez, um, but also um, really taking an interest in field recording and sort of going back to my roots with the tape recorder, really, and uh, recording sounds, and uh, became highly influenced by Kushi Tsunoda and Hildegard Westerkamp and, of course, Armory Schaefer and people like that. So for a number of years, I wasn't writing instrumental music at all. I was making field recordings and I was improvising and I was sort of doing electroacoustic work out of those practices. Um, and up on the screen, you see a bell minor bird from Melbourne, Australia, which was my very first um, acoustic ecology conference uh, experience. If you know about the World Forum for Acoustic Ecology, it was a group that I got involved in. This was in uh, 2003, I think. The bell minor bird has a curious song. It sounds like an electronic beep. And so if you can play sound number 01, um, this is a, um, a field recording um, of bell minor birds with a flame, uh, plane flying overhead uh, made in outside of Melbourne, Australia. So you can uh, skip ahead to the next uh, image now, image O2. Um, so I made that recording um, in Melbourne, and I, I use that recording in a number of different ways. Um, uh, some, some I made a couple of um, uh, sort of sonic photographs out of it. That, that this is one actually framing certain aspects of field recordings, also processing them and using them as very, in various ways. Um, uh, after as six years working at RPI as a studio engineer and a teacher. Um, I decided to go back and do my PhD. Uh, I went to Princeton and uh, decided to take up instrumental composition again. And what I decided was I really wanted to find a way to um, let instrumental composition allow me to continue the work that I was doing in field recording and improvisation. That is to find a new language uh, for composition and to sort of get away from uh, uh, the sort of notes and rhythms and harmonies and, and things that I was, I was doing as a composer earlier in my career. Um, and so I thought, you know, wouldn't it be interesting to, um, uh, you know, imitate nature, uh, literally, uh, to see um, if I can understand the structures that I'm so interested in and the textures that I love so much when I, when I do field recording and I discover these things. So this is a composition that you can play sound number 02. Um, for piccolo, clarinet, violin, cello, piano, and percussion that is an attempt to recreate that field recording that you just heard. So you can see in the score, I'm kind of also using some alternative scoring techniques because I thought, well, if I'm going to do this, why don't I try to get the, the performers' minds out of the grid, so to speak, and give them another way of thinking about, about sound. So this is a recording, this is great, actually, we can just continue like this. This is a recording of a refrigerator, if you can go to uh, picture number three um, from a hotel room in Seattle, wonderful refrigerator drone. image number four and sound number four. So this is a string quartet um, uh, played by the Bertana string quartet that's highly inspired by that particular uh, refrigerator recording.
So um, let's move to sound number seven now. Um, I've got a lot of these examples, but we don't need to go through them all. Um, and um, no image is, is necessary for this. This is the sound of a, a, a bowl that I found at a thrift store. And what I'm doing is I'm rubbing it with my finger along the edge and recording it with a, with a microphone. Um, and um, again, this gets into sort of the improvisatory nature of my work and the, the discovery of sounds through um, uh, sonic discovery. Uh, so if we take this, but what would be like to score that? Uh, so the next song that's sound example number number 08 um, is an attempt to uh, score something that was similar in structure to that sound without necessarily imitating it directly. Um, so there's there is an Im no I don't think there's an image for this one, but we can just listen. I think this is violin, cello, and harp. So let's go to um, sound example number nine. This is an example of a, that was an example of a composition that I wrote for a different purpose other than itself. It was performed, but the main reason I wrote it was to get the sounds to put into this next piece, which, is a, which was an eight channel electroacoustic piece, where I combined the sound of the, of the bowl and the recordings that I made of that piece and some other sounds. So that would be sound number 09. Okay, um, so finally, um, let's move to Edmonton. So I moved to Edmonton. Um, and there's a bunch of other pieces, including some for laptop orchestra involving uh, trying to sonify the sound of a casino. Um, and I yeah, sort of became interested in gaming sounds. Uh, and that's sort of continued to be a fascination of mine lately. But um, if you could move to image number 09 and just flip through that, um, uh, sorry, go back or keep going forward. Yeah, these, these three images, you can just kind of flip through them. Um, so in addition to um, my interest in sort of field recording and bringing things into the concert hall that come from outside, I'm also interested in taking things back outside um, and trying to dialogue with, with the sounds of, of nature and of um, our soundscapes. So I've become interested in working with um, environmentally controlled instruments and installations. So um, what you're seeing on the screen is a series of images of a variety of solar-powered um, instruments and devices. Um, and this is sort of new work for me within the last couple of years. And uh, maybe we'll close with one video, um, which would be video number um, 01. Okay, that's all right. Well, so um, maybe the better way to talk about it, there is an installation down in the Ortona that is a, a piece that's a solar-powered piece. It's based on the sounds of my apartment. I have baseboard water, or, um, hot water heating in my apartment, which is wonderful because it means that there's no... Oh yeah, we can play that one. Yeah. And I think there's sound for that too. This is Patrick. Oh, okay, this is Jazzy Joe. That one's fine, too. <coughs> so the idea with this is no batteries. Um, it operates directly off of what available light is there. And it's highly affected by how much light there is at a given moment. 
Oh, is that, is that that short? Nine seconds. Nine, seconds. Oh, we did it. That's 15 minutes. And that is the sound um, of Robotron clearing a level. So I cleared a level. Um, so anyway, in closing, um, uh, one of the pieces, as I was mentioning at the Ortona, is um, inspired by the sounds of my apartment in the winter. Now, the nice thing about hot water baseboard heating is that there's no forced air, so you don't get all that high density stuff. But what you do get is hundreds of tiny little coming from all directions as the pipes are heating up and all the tiny little fins get heated and start clicking. So the piece down at the Ortona, one of my pieces, is a, it's a sort of um, attempt to recreate that type of a soundscape. It's basically a tiny little percussion quartet um, of hanging aluminum flower pots that get pinged by piezo drivers um, in rhythmic patterns. And those are, those are activated by small solar cells. Um, and so the lighting, the amount of light, determines how quickly those those patterns are in tempo and how loud they are. Um, so um, I think that I can stop there.